I received many comments about post-production in Lightroom, an important part of the creative process. I don't batch process. Every landscape is different, even from the same location on the same day. Furthermore, how I set the camera controls and the way I take photographs for each shot is with Lightroom in mind. This can only be achieved through practice and is far removed from the convenience of instant gratification. If this is your preference, then stick with JPEGs. Turning first to the camera, which is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, I only set those controls from which I can backtrack if I change my mind later. That can be quite often because what I do today could be different tomorrow. I don't use filters, sharpen in camera or increase saturation. If such changes are important, where possible, they are best done in Lightroom. I keep camera controls flat, that is, without change. However, I prefer to spot meter and underexpose every shot by minus 0.3 EV to hold highlights. I only bump the ISO up from 200 when there is no choice, but as OMD cameras have superb image stabilizers, that is often not necessary for hand holding. All shots are saved to RAW, by all means saved to JPEG as well, but I prefer to control all post-production to the RAW file as it is an important part of the entire creative process. I am in charge. How much work is done in Lightroom is debatable. Certainly, if you increase the shadows or black sliders too much, noise increases. Therefore, moderation is essential with enthusiasm kept under firm control. As I am working on an unprocessed digital image, I implement as much work in Lightroom that is possible. A final JPEG copy is only made when Lightroom adjustments are completed. I could save to TIFF instead of JPEG or resize the image for projection or YouTube. The original out-of-camera RAW file is kept and archived. Here are both original RAW and JPEG files from the same image the latter digitally processed by the camera. The overexposed highlight bottom right in the JPEG file is still there. The RAW file can be corrected in Lightroom. These are the settings, which are quite drastic because of the dynamic range of the digital image. Shadows have also been lightened. Rydal Water in the Lick District Although I have stated shutter speed and aperture, they are not important. Critical is minus 0.3 EV under exposure. I have spot metered off the sunlit wood because most of the image is in shade. Highlights need to be correctly exposed to avoid unintentional overexposure often caused by matrix metering. We pass to the Lightroom panel. I increase clarity and vibrance, but not saturation. This makes the image look artificial. I increase the exposure slightly in Lightroom rather than camera and tweak contrast to add impact. Finally, I bring highlights down to increase detail in clouds and change white balance to cloudy preset adding warmth. These are basic controls in Lightroom and they do most of the essential work.
The camera settings for Scout Scar are similar to Rydal Water. It was later the same day, but the lighting dramatically different within an hour of sunset. Although it may not be clear from the unprocessed raw image, there was considerable contrast between the lengthening shadows and sunlit highlights. This comes to life in post-production, the creative element of digital photography. Contrast is tweaked a bit more than the last image and shadows lightened. I also changed white balance to daylight, the reduction in warmth imparting a cleaner overall tone to colours. By making these changes in Lightroom, they can be undone, something more difficult if carried out in camera. It gives the photographer the luxury to change mind six months later, which is often my problem. We enter an entirely different world with this night shot of York. The ISO is 400, but as metering systems do not recognise black, the EV is set to minus 1.7. This effectively adds nearly three stops to hand-holding, which would have been a half a second and not a fifteenth of a second at f4 maximum aperture. I spot metered near a bright window, relying on the electronic finder for guidance. Because of the enormous dynamic range, exposure has been significantly increased in Lightroom, not camera. Highlights are reduced and shadows lightened. This has the potential of increasing noise and cameras will handle it differently. It took me some time to work out how far I could tweak the controls before significant noise affected the scene. I am not completely against noise, especially if unavoidable. I have realised that by the time an image has been resized and converted to a MP4 file for YouTube, any imperfections seem to just melt away. It should be clarified that whilst I adjust the original 4x3 ratio image in Lightroom, in Photoshop I cropped to 16x9 the preferred YouTube format. I also resized down to 1400 pixels width. I have developed the system over many years, tweaking it through experience. I doubt if it is perfect or the only answer, but I supply images to publishers based on this very technique and they are accepted for books, magazines and calendars. I have yet to have an image returned through this type of post-production tweaking.